What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. This one's pretty unique. A student sent me a similar question, so I thought I'd make a video for us. So we have to find the value of m so that this limit over here exists. So we have the limit as x approaches two, of 5x squared plus mx minus two, all over x minus two. So we gotta solve for this m value here, and we have to make this limit exist. So notice that at this point, if we do a direct substitution, if we plug in uh, two for x, notice that the denominator is going to be zero. And what is the only way for a limit to exist when the denominator is gonna be zero at that x value that we're approaching? The only way a limit can exist is if it's in the format zero over zero. Then there's a chance for the limit to exist. If we ever end up having a number over zero, then this limit here uh, will never exist. It always does not exist because if you end up having a number over zero, it means that at that x value, there's gonna be a vertical asymptote. So let me show you a different example to illustrate this. So let's say that we had Let's actually use the same denominator. Let's say that we had the limit as x approaches two of x plus one over x minus two, like that. Notice here, if we do a direct substitution, what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up having three over zero. And as I said here, whenever you get a number over zero, the limit automatically does not exist. And if you were to take this, and if you were to graph it, then at that x value of two, there would be a vertical asymptote, right? There'd also be a horizontal asymptote and then at um, negative one and then uh, negative a half, there'd be a y-intercept. So it looks something like that. That's how, the, that's how this graph would look. So notice as we approach that x value of two, right, the y values are not approaching anything. But let's say instead that we had a function limit as x approaches two, let's write the same factors, x plus one, but now let's put x minus two at the top, and then x minus two at the bottom. All right, so pretend this was maybe expanded, and we just factored it, we got to this point. Now notice that the x minus twos cancel out, right? Notice that actually, first thing I wanna mention is, if we do a direct substitution here, if we plug in two for x, we're gonna end up having zero over zero, right? Before canceling the factors because this bracket's gonna be zero and then this bracket's gonna be zero. So it's gonna be in this format. So there's a chance for the limit to actually exist. And then if we actually work it through, we factor, notice the x minus twos cancel out. Then notice that we could plug in two for x, we would end up with three. And the way that this function looks here is it's basically a line x plus one, and then at that x value of two, there's a hole. So even though it's undefined at that point, we're still approaching a certain y value, and in fact, the y value that we're approaching is three as we approach that x value of two. So notice the difference between these. This was a number over zero, when we do a direct substitution, limit does not exist automatically there. Over here, it's zero over zero. And because it's in that format, these factors can cancel out, and that means that there's a hole at that x value of two instead of there being a vertical asymptote. So if we go back to our example here, knowing this information that I just uh, presented, basically what's gotta happen is over here, this limit, in order for it to exist, this numerator has to approach zero as well. The denominator is gonna approach zero, but the numerator has to approach zero as well, because if it approaches a number, then that x value of two is gonna be a vertical asymptote. So we know that this numerator, if we were to factor it, we know that a factor has to be x minus two in order for the limit to exist because then the x minus twos cancel out, and then whatever factor is over here, we can plug in that x value of two, just assuming that that other factor is not x. Actually, uh, it actually doesn't matter at this point what this factor would be, because you're gonna get a number no matter what x value you plug in, that denominator's going away. But 
notice that we actually know what this factor has to be because notice we have a 5 here and we have a negative 2. So notice that this has to be a 5x and then negative 2 times positive 1 has to be on the end. Right? Negative 2 times positive 1 would give us that negative 2 at the end. So this quadratic here, it actually has to factor into this over here in order for everything to work out. Right? It's kind of like a puzzle and you're putting all the pieces together. And so at this point, notice that x minus 2's would cancel out. And then you could plug in 2 for x, you'd end up having 11. But they didn't ask what the limit is they ask what's the value of m here and the way you could find that value of m is you could actually take this because this quadratic we know has to factor into this you can expand this so this could be uh, 5x squared if you expand all this foil it out um, simplify all the like terms you'd end up getting negative 10x plus x so that'd be minus 9x and then you'd have minus 2 and so if you take this and this and compare it you could tell the m value is negative 9. And that's actually the answer to this question. Right? Another way to sort of maybe show this is plus minus 9 in brackets, like that. Right? If you want it in that exact format. But the fact that it was just minus 9x there, the m value is negative 9. So that's actually the m value for this limit to exist because if it's negative 9, then it's going to factor smoothly with x minus 2 being a factor and able to cancel out with the denominator. Now another way that you can do this, here notice we kind of went, uh, we did it in sort of a weird way, we kind of went backwards, again we kind of put like a puzzle together, there's no like smooth algebraic way to do it, but if you want a smoother algebraic way to do it, because we know that an x minus 2 has to cancel out, right, in order for the limit to exist, that means that we know that x minus 2 has to be a factor of this polynomial, 5x squared plus mx minus 2. And so if x minus 2 is a factor of this, let's say we, uh, we label this polynomial factor of, uh, let's call it f of x, then by the factor theorem, if x minus 2 has to be a factor of this, then we know that f of 2 has to equal 0, right, by the factor theorem, if you remember from advanced functions. So what we could do is we could plug in 2 for x, notice 5, 2 to the power 2 plus 2x minus 2 equals 0, or uh, sorry, I plugged in 2 for x and this should be an m, my bad. Right, plugged in 2 for all the x's, and that has to equal 0 because x minus 2 is a factor, and then you could solve for that m value. Right, so if I bring the, uh, notice this would be 20, minus 2 is 18, when I bring it over it would be negative 18, and then notice m is equal to negative 9. Same answer that we got the other way. Alright, so one more time. Um, X the x minus 2 here has to cancel out in order for this limit to exist because then it's going to be in that format 0 over 0, right? It can't be a number over 0. And the only way you're going to get a number, of zero, uh, number over 0 is if x minus 2 is not a factor of this. So we know x minus 2 has to be a factor of that. And then because we know that this is 5x squared and this is minus 2, we know that this factor has to be 5x plus 1. Right, in order to get 5x squared as the a value and then negative 2 as the c value. And then what we could do is we, now that we have these two factors, we could expand them, get it in this format, and then we could clearly see that m is negative 9. Another way to do it, the last way that I did it, is uh, we know x minus 2 has to be a factor of this polynomial in order to cancel out with this x minus 2. And if x minus 2 is a factor, of this, then if you remember from advanced functions by factor theorem, that means f of 2 has to equal 0. If we let f of x equal that polynomial in the numerator, so when we plug in 2 for x, notice that we'll only have an m to solve for, and then that m value ends up being negative 9.